What's today? July, June, thirteenth, uh, fourteenth. What's today's date? Uh, some... I have no some... idea. Yeah, me neither. It's Saturday in June. It's the Saturday after D-Day, so it's Saturday thir- the 13th, June 13th, 2020, 12 and 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and I don't know what time it is in in, in Franklin land. Um, yeah, dude, so I've been following all your... Jesus, now you've got three helmets. Frankly oh, Built, God. for everyone listening, Frankly Built. He was episode number 49 and is a 3D printing um, prodigy. Yeah, dude. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that word. <laughs> shut up, shut up, Frank. Yeah, you are. It's, dude, so... I've uh, got... Yeah. Just take I've got take it over. Seven. I've got seven helmets now. I've uh, these are these are production models. These are uh, these won't stay here long. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been busy. Yeah, been, they've been coming out pretty nice. What are you doing? What are you doing for the damage? Are you does that print the damage or do you damage it uh, post production? I, da- I damage it myself. Yeah. Uh, so that's what they come out looking like. Okay. And um, there's a couple different paths I can take to damage them. Um, I can damage them before I paint them. I can damage them after. Um, I'm testing theories and just like what's easier, what's not. Um, I did one like this a while ago, uh, a Battle Damage Mark 85 helmet, and it uh, it came out nice. It was it oh, was. Yeah. Uh, I did all the damage, so I I printed it. You know, it just was a raw print. I primed it. I damaged it and then I painted it. Um, and so I wanted to try it the other way. I wanted to try it. All right, let me paint it first and then do the damage. Turns out I don't like doing it that way. Really? Um, I thought it would. I thought it would come out better if you painted it first and then damaged it. Maybe you'd get some like realistic flaking or cracking. Well, that's why I paint. So that's why I damaged. I did a lot of um, the deep damage beforehand, okay. um, like the big scars, like the blowouts in the back. Yeah. Um, what I did is I painted the whole helmet, or I, I damaged the whole helmet for the most part. Then I put chrome over the entire thing. Then what I did is I taped off all of the damage so the chrome was still there. Oh, okay. And then I painted everything else. Okay. And then as what I would do as I would go by and sand it or scratch it, the chrome would reveal itself. Okay. So it actually gave it a much deeper effect. Okay. Um, so now these ones, this one, since I damaged it after, I had to go back in and hand paint all the chrome. And okay. so it just added kind of another step. It was either tape off all the chrome or painted it afterwards. I'm gonna go back to the other method. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to try it out. Yeah. Um, it's still, I mean, it still came out. I, I like them. Like, I still think yeah, they came nice. out nice, awesome. but it just took longer. Yeah, okay. So. With the, with, so the, with the right eye, or my right eye, I guess it's left eye on the damaged one for the lighting. Did you have to do like separate, um, is that just different coding for the lighting or did you have to put in separate LEDs to get that? Okay, all right. It's just, it's, it's just cracked, it's, okay. it's the same lens. Okay. Uh, I just cracked it and broke it in parts. That's so, awesome. It you, gives it a pretty nice effect. It does. Um, it, it, the way these helmets are wired up is when the faceplate clips on, it lights up automatically. Yeah. So somebody can wear it and then like they'll pop off the mask and yeah. you know, they can talk to you or whatever and yeah. then just, Right on, and then they still have a battery pack in the back to turn them on or off. Fucking mad and you scientist. Can, yeah, I'll do. I'll do one for you. You can. You can see through them just fine. Um, I don't know if I had any helmets done last time we did like a live stream like this. No, you were trying um, to. I remember you were trying to put it on. Oh no, no, you put it on for a little bit. I remember you were <laughs> talking. That's it. So I'm getting better at them for sure. Dude, you're getting incredible. Jesus, dude. I mean, that look. That looks like Marvel movie, like studio set. Jesus, dude. Yeah, there's a little bit of a... Um, you can probably hear me just fine, actually. I can hear you perfect. That's incredible. That's nice. Yeah, and it, you, you don't have... It doesn't have the bobblehead effect. It doesn't doesn't yeah. look like, yeah, some... Yeah. It doesn't this one's look... actually a little big. Um, this one could be a little bit smaller, honestly. Um, I have one that is a little bit smaller that was made for, uh, made for my head instead of just the general populace. But... That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. It works. Is, I like it. Now, have you have you thought about going to like the next level and it'd be like create like some sort of like Jarvis interface on the inside? <laughs> have it like 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 a viewfinder um, like or a hood selecting people around you. <laughs> like, that'd be pretty cool. Some like, Google Glass augmented reality just start tagging people. Uh, a lot of people have said stuff about like Google Glass. And, yeah, uh, that'd be pretty. That actually be pretty fun. Dude, um, be being able to uh, incorporate something like that into a helmet. I don't know how yet though. Um, You'll figure it out. Can you also? Can you hear me all right? I can like, hear you. Perfect. Sounds okay. You're perfect. Cool. I got, I got a microphone now. I can move around. When, and, you, ooh, when you tap yeah. it, it's fucked so, up. But yeah, no, it's it's hey. it's perfect. Jesus. Cool. Dude. Good. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to do any of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so 
this whole first suit that I made was all, um, it's all analog. It's mm -hmm. all, um, it's all direct wiring systems. It's switches and um, triggers and stuff. There's no programming. I think we talked about that the first time yeah. a little bit, how I kind of went with a different direction than everybody. Um, the new suit I'm making though is, it, it, that's when I'm gonna dive into all the programming oh, and stuff Jesus. and using Arduinos and microcontrollers. Um, because the new suit ha it has a lot, it has a lot more room for everything, a lot more room for activities, if you will. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna dive into that. And then eventually what I can do is go back and apply it to other things, you know? Yeah. Uh, I can upgrade some things. Um, I did see a kid's toy at a store. It was actually kind of cool. It was like a, it was like a eight year old Iron Man mask. You know, it was, it, it, it was just like the front, you oh. know? Um, but the faceplate lifted up and it just like had a hinge right here. But then underneath it was a clear acrylic goggles. I guess they were just like this, but they were clear and they had etchings on them. So when you hit them with, L there were two blue LEDs on okay. the side. So then when they, they lit up the yeah, lens, the it grid. looked like a HUD. The grid lighting, know? yeah. Yeah, and I was like, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. Like, it was like real cheap and shitty looking, you know? Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, that's actually like kind of a cool idea, you know? Because getting something, the other idea was, um, which one is uh, this one? Um, the other kind of idea I had, so this helmet, the, fa the, the, the faceplate doesn't come off, it's it lifts, okay. right? So the idea was, uh, almost have like a little LED system in the in here so when it's all the way up it like projects onto your face. Oh that'd be badass. So that that'd be kind of cool. Like once it goes all the way up just it lights your whole face up. So you'd have uh, yeah I was, I was gonna say yeah it's you always because you always see like the there's like the camera angle in the movies. There's like Iron Man third person, there's Iron Man from what he sees, but then there's always the yeah, you know, it's his face. You know, Jarvis, give me an update. Like blah, 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 blah. that's what I thought. Exactly. Yeah. That's what you could do is just kind of yeah project numbers and scrolling yeah, shit just, and maybe it just has like just, some, just has just a couple little or just even just light your face up blue ooh, I mean, at the very basis of it yeah having side bit your face lit up blue i think would be just like get some like pie charts or something and just you know yeah, yeah just, just some bullshit, just something, some you know it's some, like a, a very a very simple like type of system yeah just some uh, sci-fi bullshit just yeah it can, it can be something from like superman yeah <laughs> dude fuck yeah this one doesn't fit me the best anymore but let's see if we can get it to work so the jaw doesn't like staying on this one. Okay. But it's activated when yeah. the mask comes down. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the hinge or just the, the uh, magnetic? Um, both? That one, look, that one looks really clean. That one, there's something about that one that the other one doesn't have. This one's fit to my head better. Okay, this is well, scaled down go. a little bit. There you um, go. But I even have trouble moving my jaw. Yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't move though. Yeah. Uh, it's much it's much more form fit to my face yeah that but uh right. this one's not for me this one's this one's for a customer too Fuck yeah. uh, it was originally going to be for me but i went with a different route so uh i decided eh, well, let this one go but this was this was a test this sizing was like a good test for um will it work but uh, this is my favorite helmet this look the this style the maker um, yeah. the guy who made this akira yuming uh -huh. uh, he's on cg trader and this is like the best, most accurate helmet I've found. And it just, it fits nice. It looks nice. It has those nice, like, the angry eyes. I guess, yeah, it does. Yeah, you know? yeah. A little more, yeah, a little more offensive. Stupid. Yeah. Where the one I was using before has, like, a little bit of a softer face. Uh, yeah. So I think it still looks good. The gold on this came out great. It is, like, it looks metal. Yeah. I'm, pr I'm proud of this one. <laughs> that one. That one looks a little more like, um, like the drones. You know when they're like attacking Zucker, not Zucker. Oh, Strucker. Yeah, yeah. When you know, and, and the drones are going out. You know, this. You know, we are here to protect you. We are here. Yeah, yep, yep. I can little, see that. Little soft, which is probably by design. You know, a little softer, a little less like dystopian. Yeah. Like, whereas that one, the other one looks a little more. Yeah, like the you can, gonna fight Thanos. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it really, it, it lends itself really good. But they, they think they're the same model helmet yeah, yeah. but that just shows like designers just just you know, the eyes yeah it makes that yeah makes the world of a difference it, it's a uh, it's neat it's fun to get into <laughs> you need to make you need to go in the full suit and go out right now during the riots just be like, Gosh, please man just be like please return to your homes please <laughs> please, yeah, right? please return to your home yeah we are here to protect yeah you. we are here to, please return to your home well, that that'd be, be kind of funny actually. yeah that made, i was looking up irobot the other day because that just reminded that made me think of because irobot came out in like 2003 but it's when they literally do the curfew in chicago 2008 like for that's when it came out because i remember watching no 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 
No, because I remember watching it with like my best friend my freshman year of high school, which would have been 2005. <laughs> Check out iRobot. See what it is. I think it's before 05. That was a good I liked iRobot. I loved it. It was a very good I loved iRobot. Um, 2004, good guess. Woo! Um, yeah, no, it's, yeah, well, because I always remember it just, it opens up with 2035, and I was just like, man, that's so far away, and now I'm like, oh, no. Oh, that's, uh, that's, is it? That's, no way. 2035? That's, that's how it opens up, Chicago, 2035, and now we are now closer to 2035 than we are to iRobot, right? So, yeah, by a year. No way. <laughs> yeah, way. <laughs> yeah. Which, I don't know, I feel like that could be accurate. I mean, Boston Dynamics, I don't know. I guess, Autonomous right? cars, yeah. Hyperloop, they kind of have Hyperloop in there too, right? Not really, but I mean, they have the they have the tunnel where they're all driving like 180 miles an hour. 35, holy yeah. shit. Oh yeah, I have a weird memory, man. I have useless shit that I have stored up. What, 15 years? Yeah, 16, shit, 16, right. Why one year? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's some, there's some, uh, there's a science, there's a science channel I watch on YouTube. It's probably one of the only channels I indulge myself with because the rest I feel is just, I don't know, it distracts me. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Kyle Hill and uh, Because Science, and he was just recently talking about um, where is the next fly, like where's my flying car? Mm -hmm. um, it was this whole movement a while ago, or just it, through, you know, uh, back in the 50s and 60s and 70s, everybody's like, we're going to have jetpacks and cars yeah, yeah, are going to yeah, be flying. Yeah, yeah. Like the Jetsons, I think, are based in like the year 2000, like 100. Oh. Like it's not some advanced, crazy future. Yeah. It's like, but like, you know, there was this joke, where's my hoverboard? That was yeah. it. That was the most recent one. And Back to the future yeah. one, yeah. Um, so like, but like, what's the next thing everybody's been like, but there hasn't been one. There hasn't been this like, you know, like one day we're gonna have this. What is that thing that people would always rave about back in the '60s and '70s? You know, it's gotta be. Um, I think self. -driving. Electric car, maybe. Like, well, one day cars will be electric. Well, they are. Yeah. So, like, what's next? I think you know? self. I think ubiquitous self-driving. Because right now it's like a, it's still I, th in relative infancy. I think it's gonna get to a point where like driving on your own is gonna you're gonna be an outlier. You know, you will. No, that that has to be the paradigm shift. That has to be the well, absolutely. That, it absolutely that's will. Too. What's up? I said it absolutely will. I think that's the it's, that's the closest to because my brother has a Tesla and he'll and he'll awesome. yeah it's fucking awesome. And every once in a while he'll just send me videos and it's just pulling out of the driveway like driving along like merging onto the highway doing eighty get switching lanes and the entire time he'll just have his hands like that not touching it and it's that's definitely that I mean that mixed with with Uber and Lyft I mean it needs to happen yeah it, it, exactly if 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 a company, it's not going to be Uber. Uber's going to Uber's going to go under soon. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> you, you saw how they were like, we're going to make a deal with Tesla so we can do their self-driving cars and then our pickup Tes app. And yeah, Tesla, Tesla was like, let it happen. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla was like, why would they're like, why would we match with you? It's harder to make a, It's harder it. to make a self-driving car. We can make the fucking the app to to, to get yeah. a ride. It's a it's a pickup app. It's like ordering food. Like yeah. you don't have you had an innovative idea. The platform. Of, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are a couple hundred people when Uber came out who were like, I had that same damn idea. Yeah. Like it, it it wasn't revolutionary. No. Man. Someone <laughs> like, someone just capitalized on it. Someone just exactly, made the cash. Exactly. No, they have no bar it's, They have no bargaining power. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have a unique idea. Can you sell it? Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah. Uh, I think. Yeah. All all Tesla has to do. How how fun? How cool would that be? Um. I was thinking like you're, community you're, you're, Teslas. Every at every Tesla dealership, when the cars aren't being sold or at the dealership, they're out just Ubering. Well, th well that's what I thought. Is like because they have they have bikes like that in cities. There's, they have uh they have bikes in there that are like um, yeah. It's, you can you just pick it up at any one of like the hundred yep. slots, and then you just yep. go. It's in Manhattan. It's, it's in. A, yeah. What if it was just you're not using it? Why why pay for a Tesla that you're gonna drive? For what? Maybe, may if you have a long commute, it's maybe ten percent of your twenty-four hours awake. We're not awake twenty-four there, hours in the day. There are, I think, there were apps starting to emerge where you rent your car out to people and stuff like that, like almost almost like a um, Airbnb, but with like vehicles. Yeah. Like if yeah, exactly. If you're you're commuting and you live in the city, or you know, you don't need your car x amount of hours, you, you know, why not rent it out? You yeah. know, as long as you have the right insurance, who cares? Yeah, I you think know? it would be That's easier us. with autonomous. Because if it was people driving, you always there'd be so much like 
there'd be so much like not red tape but like paperwork like what if someone fucks it up what if, who are you do i have a background check on you versus if it was a hundred percent autonomous you that's it you it's could gonna everything. It, it's gonna happen it has to happen because it, it is it is I, i'm a car guy i love i love driving yeah, i love yeah. i go to drift events i love i love driving but i know damn well how dangerous it is and <laughs> yeah. i know how bad of drivers people are yeah, it's, um, it's nothing about. Like, hey, well, I don't need a driver. I am a good driver. It's, you probably are a good yeah. driver. It's you're time, a good driver at the speeds you've been driving. But yeah. now, if everything on the road is capable of doing, yeah. Frank, would you? Uh... Frank, then. <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah, know what just happened. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it froze up when you said every other car is capable of, but yeah, driving oh. a lot faster. Yeah, it's not that oh, you're wait. not a bad driver. It's that every other jackass on the highway. <laughs> exactly. And it's either – it's going to be either everybody – you have to get on board with this and or because – you, you won't be allowed to. You know, and and we're used so to high. being able to drive. Well, people used to be able – used to be uh taking horses everywhere you know yeah, yeah. and then you know what people started looking well you have a car why well, i'll use my horse this is easier and it's like is it though you know so it, there, there'll be a shift there'll be a lot of um issues with that i'm sure but eventually yeah. it'll be it'll be a cool new world and then eventually everybody will just have like iron man suits that they like Fuck fly yeah. around in do you, th <laughs> do you think it would be that or do you think everything is just gonna become like virtual because in terms of like think of how much cheaper it is if everything was just virtual instead of having to like create more and more shit if everyone can just plug into a unit in your house you can go into an infinite world you don't need to build bigger and bigger malls and sports stadiums there and... that is i think that's uh that's another conversation like yeah. um if that, there's a lot of people who believe that's peak society. If yeah. you could then, if you could reach a, a level of your existence where you, I've read way too much up on this. <laughs> and Upload your you, consciousness. Like instead of, yeah, you could be spacefaring and have enough energy, but to what end? To just expand the human population? Or if you can find out a way to make enough energy and harness enough energy where you could simulate a, such a precise, unbelievable reality where everybody could literally have their own heaven or paradise and mm -hmm. you transcend to that, what's the point of moving past that? Exactly. You know, that's it. it that could be know? the reason, that could be the great silence. That could be the Fermi paradox. Why Why go light years if you can just create Shangri-La on your planet? That's, yeah. That's Ray Kurzweil's idea, right? Upload everyone. Mm -hmm. He's the, the, do you know who Ray Kurzweil well, I don't know is? about the, uh, the Fermi paradox. Um, you what? You, we could be. We could. We could be the first. We very well could. I don't think we are, but I. You know, we could be. I think. Yeah. Nu I think nuclear weapons are probably a bottleneck. I think. Yeah. See, a lot I, of things are a bottleneck. The, I think. I think there's like a couple of bottlenecks, and it's like, it's like a, it's like an exam. You have to pass a couple of exams. I think we passed the first big one, which was nuclear, and we passed that in 1962. Well, I don't think we're anywhere near past that yet. Well, I mean, there's the, too, the big. There's test. too many people still. With their finger on the trigger. Yeah. Trigger. yeah. So there's. Well, the, the big test. Cuban we're business. not even. We're still. We're still hardly a type zero civilization. Fuck you, and Frank. That's pushing it. <laughs> that's that's pushing it. Like we still. Well, we're still. We're we're one wrong plane crash or one wrong yeah. tank crossing a border from hitting World War Three and yeah. like like yeah. that's that's not advancing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. See, I we're like. Making, advancements for war mostly that's, that's very true yeah i like to think of it as like we passed the cuban missile crisis and that was like exam one exam two is covid and then exam yeah, three weird. yeah i don't know what exam three would be it would be I don't, it'd probably be global warming that's exam three can you can you figure out a, a new energy source can you reverse your damage <laughs> that's what i think it is and then i think we're on a good path to it yeah um, i think we're walking lot, on the razor changes edge. people aren't gonna like um, cutting back on um, meat consumption, red meat consumption, and um, gasoline cars, and uh, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot. <laughs> I think Amer I think America is unfortunately going to be one of the bottlenecks for that and uh, consumerism. Probably. Like, well, I want this. Yeah. I've always had it. Why are you taking it away? It's like because we can. Like, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know. I think that's where like the virtual world because it, it, we I've talked about this before. What. If you ever look at like retrofuturism, like old predictions of what the future will be like, 
it's never it's always an extrapolation of their technology it's always a linear extrapolation so if you look at like there's like these ninth there's like a magazine in 19 no, right? exactly you can only imagine what you have yeah, imagined exactly you can't- yeah, it's like in 1900 right. they predicted everyone would have their own personal hot air balloons. Like, you know, it's they they took their thing and extrapolated. That's the future. It. Yes, yeah. exactly. First Cell phones weren't a thing. Exactly. Now, Star Trek starts making these communication devices in their original show where oh, you can talk to anybody anywhere at any time. And yeah. eventually, that got a bunch of nerds. Or you know, what if we had these pocket devices where you could call somebody from? And now it's just this this yeah. incredibly ridiculously powerful object that i mean if you showed this to somebody 100 years ago you they'd have a panic attack yeah. like they wouldn't even be able to comprehend what it was yeah you know um you know, like give me any number and i can make like in Anywhere one of the most the powerful things on our phone is the damn calculator we never use it you know yeah and the camera it's, man <sighs> I mean, Wild. Dude, I got to talk about it. It can track you. Yeah. It can listen to anybody. It can show you You can download unlimited information. You can download Google Earth and you can look at a you can look at a replication of the world in your <laughs> hand. That would change the tide of of any war up through like oh my God, Vietnam. Yeah. That would have been amazing. Yeah. One 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 uh one imaging satellite in orbit in World War 2 would have been very different. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Imagine that. I mean, that would have been insane. It's so on that note what i think is like whatever we always think it's going to be it's always something far different so like we look at it as like how are we going to get more resources uh population the burden on the planet how are we going to do all this but like what if it's what if it's something we're not thinking about at all what if like through Neuralink, we find a way to actually upload like our consciousness onto this well all of a sudden the, the entire need for food goes out the window if you can abandon your biological meat body the entire need for food goes out the the entire need for materials for housing goes out because it's just digital yeah you have yeah. a virtual world with make a skyscraper for everyone to live in make it, it make it a million no, exactly. stories Everybody can have their, um yeah if you haven't yet you should look into a jupiter brain you should look into that whole jupiter brain i'll write that down you should definitely read up on what a jupiter brain is and what it is capable of oh, and we might be in one right now and there's no way to prove it without Making a Jupiter brain, okay, so well, it's a it's a it's a well, it's a tr- have- it's a simulation theory paradox where you, you could we could be in one right now. You could be a figment of my sim- simulation. I could be a figment of yours. We could be in the same simulation. Yeah. And there's no way there's no way to know because the, the well, there was one thing I read. It's if you had a baby born right just fresh out of the womb and you strapped the most advanced set of virtual reality goggles on it mm-hmm. ears touch everything yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's all it saw and it wasn't even good graphics i'm not even saying it's good high fi- it's low poly res graphics but they can touch everything they can hear everything they can see everything they can smell everything that baby would never know what actual yeah, reality world. looked like yeah there would be no way to know yeah and we very well in some advanced way could be in that and there's no way to know Unless you were able to go and make something like a Jupiter brain with it, almost infinite processing power, which would theoretically break the simulation, mm-hmm. or we make our first Jupiter brain and we ascend. Yeah. So who knows? It's it's, it's a it's 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 a, it's a real it's a real mind meld of yeah. just like not so like the Matrix, but like without machine overlords and all that dark stuff. But hey. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I think yeah. the idea that we can create video games to me that already just that's enough proof right there that that we're in a we're in a simulation. If we can already make crude simulations, where I can go in and I can go finish this podcast and then I can go sit down and turn on Grand Theft Auto or Just Cause and I can fly around and blow shit up in a world that I mean, compared to the real world, not realistic. But I mean, all things considered, 4K TV on an Xbox One X like looks pretty good it's got great audio it's it's the con- the controller vibrates it's 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 colorful it's loud it's the characters <laughs> develop so if yep. that is possible well then you just have to extrapolate that by a million years and be like okay I, mean, even, I wouldn't even i, I, I wouldn't even say a million probably think about our technological yeah. advancements in yeah, the past exponential. 500 years if you can like, go from a model t to a tesla in a century we've right? only been flying for about a hundred years yeah the Wright Brothers' first flight in SpaceX just put people in space. We've been to the moon. Yeah. We're, we've been to Mars, just not physically. Yeah. 100 years of flight. Yeah. As opposed to thousands of years of human existence. Yeah. And just 
that tech, that tech, like what? Like that yeah. is such a giant. Like the graph was like, whoop, whoop, yeah, up. like it's, it's insane. It, yeah, yeah. punt up. So it's, what's another hundred years? You know? Yeah, yeah, you're we're right. We're gonna be on Mars. Yeah. That, that's it. We are going to be. We're gonna be in. T- we're probably be on Mars in fifteen, twenty years. Yeah. I don't know if we'll be in, as quickly as they're saying, but I think like people, the, the people who will be on Mars are alive right now. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. wild. It's, when we were only on, we just got on the moon. What? 50, 60 years ago. Fifty-one years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the difference between the Wright brothers and walking on the moon was sixty-seven years. Isn't that? obscene that's ins- think about that literally these like when you put it that way yes yeah. think about that the guys Oscar. in like top hats and like three-piece suits like all right wilbur all right orville like crank it up and they fly on a shit. beach just that shit's made of wood yeah it's, like, it's literally like <laughs> this paper mache shit and it's, it's yeah it. and then you go from that to literally landing on the moon it's I can make these sci-fi bullshit exactly. toys in my house exactly. now. Exactly. Ex- like, just in our is, lifetimes. This is just a technology. Like, I was having a conversation with somebody I, uh, I talked to on Instagram, but like, okay, how far off from this is like a real Iron Man suit? Like, really? Like, what is the difference? I literally don't have the technology now to make it into something I could, you know, wear, fly around and fight, you know. But five years ago, I couldn't make this in my house, in my bedroom, or in imagine, my, you know, like. Imagine if you were a defense contractor, man. You could make that shit tomorrow. Could. I or mean, they are going to be, or people like me are going to be making it in five, ten years. Yeah. Um, metal, metal 3D printing is already a thing. It's just, it's, it's expensive. Just, yeah. This, this used to be expensive. It's come down. Now you can you can have a 3D printer for 200 bucks in your house. Yeah. And you can make everything I've made, like, period. Yeah. I haven't printed anything that you're like, oh, you need this super sophisticated printer for, no. no this is all, now bigger ones make it easier. Um, I have, a, I've got my hands on a big, big old thousand dollar printer and it, it, it I made some big shit with it. Fuck yeah. um, but like, it's just wild that like you used to have, you'd have to pay a prop master, or, you know, you'd have to pay a company Absolutely. a couple hundreds and even a th- thousands of dollars or something like this, you know, Absolutely. like, and it's, I, I can make them for like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah. It's, you just got to think about, I mean, and not only that, it's, we're looking at that as the crazy thing. And it's like, well, what do you do? Oh, well, I post these videos online. I have a channel, frankly built. And it's like, but even that part is insane. Like, wait, what do you do? Oh, there's this global, the internet, like, oh, it's, oh, you don't even know about that. It's like, dude, if you just go back 20 years, it's, we're looking at this as the 3D printing is crazy, but just like other shit you're doing, like that is crazy. You can put anything you want out there for anybody else to watch, period. Exactly. Someone like me can make a pod, like there, there's, there used to be barriers to entry. Okay. It's nothing. Now. Um, I, I, I actually, there, I think there was a good, uh, um, a good, um, example of having that, that reach across the planet now. It, uh, I thought it was a pretty interesting example. Um, it, it's going to sound dumb. Veganism. Sure. Have you had a beyond meat burger or an impossible burger? No, but I've heard they're fucking insane. They're good. Oh, yeah. Now, I remember seeing shows in the 90s, um, and I, even my, my parents would remember, you know, oh, you're a vegan, oh, you're, like, what are you eating? You're eating, like, yeah, you know, food. rabbit food, and you're, there was nothing good for that option. Yeah. But because, you know, you in America working on this new plant-based protein couldn't talk to the dude in France who already True. figured it out five years ago, but neither of you could talk to the dude in Australia who figured out how to take this type of meat and this or this fat and this oil and this seed yeah. and this flour and mix it together and make a meat sub like yeah. you couldn't communicate. Now that you can, and I've my my um my wife dabbles in vegan, uh-huh. um, and I've eaten some stuff, and I'm like, this is this is good, yeah. like, and it's just so minuscule, it's just something. But you know now that there's this global network of being able to talk and communicate, that you just unlock so much different information. I talk to people daily in just the printing community who are they're doctors they're they're people printing um one dude just posted on my discord um it was the piece of some dude's inner skull his like something around here part of his skull was just a little destroyed so they scanned it 
3D printed apart, and they're gonna go. They're gonna. They're gonna go. I mean, it's a medical grade 3D print. Like yeah, it's yeah, some yeah, high yeah. quality shit. Yeah. They're gonna go and fuse it into a skull, and it'll look like nothing ever happened. Jesus Christ. Like, and I talk. I, I, I talk to this guy. Like, because we're just we're not, in the yeah, same Like it's nothing. Realm. It's just like, oh, cool. All right, see ya. He's just like he just posted a picture of it. He's like, oh yeah, this is for a patient. And all of us are like, whoa, you're gonna elaborate on that? Yeah. Like, you can't just you can't what? just drop that. Yeah, it was wild, like shit like that, and like I'm just talking to all these different people. People make, you, making stuff for the, their hydroponic gardens, and people making stuff for their kitchen or their cars, or you know, selling props or sol- solving problems, making new equipment, prototyping things. And I mean, like I can talk to these people. I I, I think I was talking to somebody in Australia just earlier, uh, my buddy Nathan. Like we just talk. That's it. Yeah. It's not like some like oh my god, you're from Australia. Yeah, well, like, I, it's I, just I, like, like yeah, it's just like a sub dog. That's it. It's like, what's up, man? Yeah, like, dude. Some yeah. of my, some of my like closest friends are people I've never met in person. Uh, but I don't think anything of it. It's not just like, ooh, here's this person. Are you? Yeah. Back in the '90s and early 2000s. Um, are they a sex offender? Yeah. Who is this? Uh, he's probably a dude. It's, it's, it's not a girl. It's a dude. Yeah. Um, but now it's just like, I, you know, yeah, it's, it's. I met, I met my first girlfriend on the internet. Yeah. Like, and my parents were standoffish, but. Yeah tried to be accepting because yeah. they saw that like oh, this this isn't our area so we're gonna we're not just gonna fall into the no no yeah, way no it's, a, it's internet bad it's yeah no, they're gonna like, kidnap it, you no, t- turns out no she was a real girl i met her yeah. I met her a few times and yeah. it was like okay cool. dude you know? same thing um, in college with me that's yeah i had a thing with the girl for like it, two years it, it, yeah now granted there still are fakes but with how are. easily it is to facetime and skype and to send a picture, yeah. it's kind of hard to be. It's kind of hard to fake being somebody else nowadays. It's still possible, yeah, you, but it's it just yeah. way more effort. You can't be anonymous. I mean, it's you can be anonymous like to an extent. Like it depends but on then, what your then goals you're, are. You you look like you're trying to hide something. Exactly. Whereas back then, you were just a name in a chat room saying words. Where now it's just like, dude, join the Zoom call. Why can't I see you? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. I mean, you can stay anonymous if like your end goals are nothing past like Reddit. You just want to comment. Like that's yeah. fine. But yeah, yeah you really Reddit. you're right. You can't. Yeah, you really can't go. It's me. It's harder to be a creep. What excuse can you possibly give nowadays? Not to yeah, um, yeah. call people out on it. I've been talking to people before and been like, I'm pretty sure you're fake. And I'll tell them something very specific. I'll be like, take a picture of you holding three fingers yeah, up yeah, yeah. in front of your face. Like, you're not going to Google and find that picture, dude. Like, yeah. I'd give them something a little too specific so they couldn't find some raw photo. Or, and, and if they I, do I, find I, it, call yeah. Out, and if they do find it, be like, all right, now send that exact same picture again with one less finger. You're not finding yeah, that one. Like, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Oh, you're wearing different clothes, and now you're Indian? Yeah. Like, it's just, and now the sun's got- on the opposite side. Like, fuck off. Well, Frank, yeah. I just wrote down the timestamp. I got to go piss. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking, though, it, it's, it's, we're kind of going full circle, though, and, like, with deep fakes, soon it might be easier to be fully anonymous. Deep fakes is trippy. Deep I've fakes are deep weird, video, man. It is uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you're just like, what? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, you got to yeah. think. What do, do you, you watch Altered Carbon? I do not. But I actually just heard that name this morning for the first Break time. That one down. You want to talk about some sci-fi, trippy, out-of-body stuff? Dude, that show is incredible. I literally um, heard that name for the first time before this podcast. I was listening to... Like what is it? It's like the infographic channel or something. someone was saying something, but yeah, it's incredible. It is my favorite sci-fi anything ever, and I have a lot. All right, all right. <laughs> it is it's such a cool concept of transcending your body and like it's awesome. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to spoil anything about it. You're going. I promise you'll love okay. it. You'll watch, you'll get done with. You'll probably make it through like the first halfway through the first episode and be like, okay. Is it like what? It, <laughs> it's wild. Okay. So, all right. Get back to me. next right. podcast. We'll talk about that. Okay. One. All right. That'll, that'll be my homework. <laughs> You'll binge that one. I promise you. You're gonna be like, holy shit! All right. Don't spoil. Yeah. Don't spoil. <laughs> I wrote it down. Don't spoil. I wrote that in Jupiter Brain down. I was thinking though, just yeah, what you said about like things you wouldn't normally think about with like global communications, like veganism, and it's just little things. Yeah. Little things. But like even. I hope- uh, I, I, I I remember helping some dude in Canada troubleshoot his new printer. He just yeah. like, I don't know, he caught me the right time on Instagram. He's like, hey man, I have a question. I'm like, do you want to FaceTime? He's like, oh sure. And like, we were just, yeah. right, that's it. We were just like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, cool. Yeah. Hey, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. And, and at the end of college, I remember I put all my like M- MCAT study guides online for free. 
because I had these. Yep. I had a friend that was like first generation immigrant from Africa, and another one of the first generation immigrant from South uh, South Korea. And I had torrented all like the Kaplan classes, Berkeley reviews, and what I did was just like I just put them all together and just got rid of like the overlapping shit, but just made the ultimate MCAT study guide. Thousands of dollars worth, but like I was like, fuck that, I'm not paying. And so I gave it to them, uh, those two at first, because I was like, yeah, man, I mean, that sucks for y'all, because they're like the smartest guys I know. This is back in 2013. Well, then I put it on Reddit, because I was like, why not? I already took the MCAT. Like, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, I got in, I got the good score. Dude, it's, I still get, seven years later, I still get messages from people on Reddit, like, hey, bro, like, you helped me with that. Like, that got me into medical school. Now it's been so long. They're like, hey, man, I'm in residency, but you helped me. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, it's the weirdest, like, butterfly effect. Like, who the fuck became a doctor because of that? Like, yeah, yeah it's that's it. Another thing was um, that huge press that's like 50 years old, the Mesta 50. It's a 50,000 ton press that we built right after World War II. They say that if you fly in, if you've ever, like any commercial plane ever, like some part of it has gone through this press. Like we've literally oh. been using it since 1950 because we, the Operation Paperclip scientists showed plans for these huge presses and we still use it with like F-22s and F-35s. We still build classified parts of it. I don't know <laughs> what the importance of having a 50,000, I guess you can make huge pieces and just, stamp the fuck out of them but like instead of building yeah. a new one they recently overhauled it because they said it's good for like another 50 years <laughs> yeah yeah but That's anyway true. they said like the effects of that you don't think of like that made commercial planes bigger and cheaper which made tickets cheaper which made global air travel more accessible which facilitated just that what's brought the ticket to the common man and it's like things you would never think of this big yeah. press literally this almost like caveman like it stamp hard but this allowed, yeah. <laughs> like, what happened from that, you know? How many artists moved to Hawaii and then to Japan and, you know, were inspired and went on to create fucking Pokemon or something? And it's like, you never think anything of it, but it's, like, that's the ripple effects of it. Um, but back to what you were saying about how long until you'd be able to create a full suit. So do you mean, like, working suit, like, not, like, weaponized? Because, like, weaponized, that would be the, that's what... Why can't we have both? <laughs> I, like, it, it really, like... Everything, everything's there now. Adam Savage made a flying. He, yeah, his, I saw he made that. a titanium Iron Man suit that flies. I saw that. He's beat us to the punch, basically. You know, or, or he he was the he was the frontier, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you know, and he just came into, you know, he's been a pro, he's been a maker his whole damn life. Um, but he only started making out crazy outlandish things for himself in the past 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the kid who, uh, you know, finds me on YouTube or finds mm -hmm. what some other maker on YouTube and he's like, oh wow, like 3D printing, that's cool, you know? And he's eight, nine, 10 years old yeah. and he starts printing now. Now, yeah. And by the time he, 20s, 30s, he's been doing this shit for, you know, that long he knows it the, te the technology this this is getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and things are getting smaller you know he, he already has that leg up mm -hmm. it's the same way like you know we know how to use the internet and work it with phones but then our grandparents they mm -hmm. didn't grow up with that so mm -hmm. it's a little bit harder for them to grasp that and i'm sure even somebody is proficient in making as adam savage or you know somebody on that level they still have a hindrance. They, yeah. I think there's, because they didn't grow up with it. They yeah. had to learn it. Now you have kids who are growing up with this type of technology. It's it's no different than having a little inkjet printer under your desk, you know? Oh, I can yeah. print out paper and pictures. Well, now you can print things, Shit. Yeah, you know? You it's print. just a, it, you know, you see kids sitting in front of an iPad and yeah. you're just like, well, I would have never, I never had that when I was a kid, but yeah. now it's just, it's normal for them um, yeah. to have access to this technology that they just never existed without. Yeah, so. it's because it's not difficult to learn or use. Like if you, like if you brought a caveman, like yeah, if you brought a caveman, and you just like took a couple of years to like teach him like language and just like kind of get him caught up on like a crash course of like history and math, <laughs> like the shit like we're doing, like it's, it's not hard to learn just from like the get go. Like learning to use an iPad or the internet. If you grow up with it, I mean, it's really no different than building blocks. It's and here's the magic URL bar, and you just type what you want with your fingers. Here's how you type, and there you go. It's the, yeah. it's yeah, you're right. When you don't grow up with it, and there's this huge like development and learning curve versus just yep. 
Yeah, if you're right, if you're just taught three D printing, it's just one of the things you do it's, in it's second just grade. A thing. Just, yeah, like, like, oh, hey, hey, dad, I have a, I have a science project I need to work on. Oh, why don't you go print out these parts and yeah. make a, you know, make a telescope? You know, yeah. you can that. That's just it's just a tool now that is just accessible to everybody. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Hey, go. You're where doing research on the internet used to be difficult because you needed to make sure nobody was using your house phone. You need to make sure yeah. you know it was slow. There were less. But now it's just like how to make this thing. It's there. You can you, have it. You done. use your house phone, your fucking iPhone. You just you just do it. Yeah. It? Yeah. Even just like uh, yeah. Hey, I need to go to so and so. Yeah, I'll go. Let me get the you know get the directions on your phone, and it talks to you, and it tells you where to go as you get in a car. That I mean. I mean, dude, think about how fucking crazy cars are. Again, it's just not something that any of us think of. But yeah, it's the so you get that kid that's you know three D printing Iron Man suits from eight years old. He gets picked up. You know, he, he gets he's a smart kid in college, and he gets picked up by like Northrop Grumman or something. They bring him. It's 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 it could be it could be the craziest thing. It could be somebody doing it on their leisure. It could be somebody doing. It. We could have uh, eventually need have a use for. Um, a full type of armor suit that a soldier could wear, you know, it's if something like this is going to come to fruition and be a thing that somebody has Defense budget's probably gonna be somewhere in that mix. <laughs> you know, it's probably gonna be that type of funding where they're like we need this thing for this reason We have to beat uh, China. Yeah Yeah, sp space is becoming more of a thing. Um, it could be something as simple as that, you know, as some type of exosuit um War, you know, war is not slowing down. Yeah. It sucks, but it's it's not. So, wherever that takes us in the future, who knows? Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Exosuits have been a thing for. I mean, I remember reading like Popular Science in like middle school, mid early two thousands. Yeah, the idea of like exosuits and this super soldier. And there but these... they're starting to fade away because of just general robotics yeah. and autonomy where yeah, you don't need a person we in did it. think yeah everybody's got these exosuits and soldiers the, the soldier of the future is running through yeah. the field jumping 50 feet yeah but like what if there just was no soldier why don't we just send a freaking robot to go do that guess yeah. what he can jump 100 feet and guess what he can withstand heat guess what he doesn't need to you know you just you're looking at replacing and upgrading the wrong thing where yeah. it's like just the drones like yeah. air combats air combat's dead air there is yeah. no point there's not. It's going to be Air drone swarms, dead. autonomous drone swarms acting as like yeah. one unit. You can't top yeah. that. They don't, you don't dogfight anymore. No. That's a thing in the past. You send aircraft in there for close, but you know, an aircraft can be replaced with a drone. Yeah. The limb factor on an F-22 and F-35 is the damn it's pilot. The, it's the, the human. The aircraft the, can't operate the, the at full capacity yeah. because there's a friggin' human in it. Get yeah. rid of the human. Yeah. Get rid of the human. You get some hypersonic thing that can pull Jesus knows how many Gs. You could really just do that hairpin turn. Just put yeah, a rocket thruster it. on the bottom. You could just turn like, who cares I, if it goes through I, 200 Gs? Yeah, I, I think that'll be the, uh, it'll be a different jump. Wars will be remote and it's just, it'll be a different world. Um, and hell, I can just be straight up wrong. It could be in this other thing we didn't even think about, you know? Yeah, because like my, my like natural jump is like we go from exos, exoskeleton suits where the person's inside to I think, no, you don't even need to have a person inside. You can just have a person back at base operating it but then it's like why exactly. even have a person operating it why not just have software yeah AI. Just, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly but then at that point does it just become a battle between software you just try to kill the other nation's software before they even get the drone off the ground then does it become a purely cyber war it does i think, I think, it, I think it definitely it's does like that's the next it's, logical step yeah why worry um, why worry about fighting their irobots with our irobots when we could just send in some Stuxnet virus, some NSA shit, and go in and clip the clip the Chinese before they start, like, is that not the next logical step? Yeah. Do you could just be. sink all the defense I, money into supercomputers? One of my one of my favorite sci-fi universes when talking about um, just why is that a thing in that universe? Um, you ever watch any Gundam? Growing up as a kid, I vaguely remember it. I know what it is. So. The, in the Gundam universe, depending on what series, there's different universes and different, you know, uh, some of them are connected, some of them aren't. Basically, the question rose up, why would you ever make these giant humanoid robots fight close quarters? Like, you, you, if you have that technology, where are your missiles? Yeah. Where are your nukes? Where are these, where are these huge, you know, why would you Rail do guns, this? yeah. It started because there was um, a new type of, um, it's a, a Minovsky reactor. 
It's a special type of reactor, basically, that gives off a type of um, pollutant or particle in the air. And what this particle does is it just straight up fries. It, it blocks any type of um, uh, um, infrared radar. It blocks okay. everything. So you, if you shoot a missile, it just boop. There, you can't lock on to shit. You, it's all line of sight fire. So yeah, you can still put a couple rockets up, but like all the other thing has to do is move. So it created this need where it, it opened back up instead of you know long range combat where you never see your enemy. It opened back up. We need close quarters combat. But well, how do we destroy an entire battleship at close quarters? You know, we can't. So it started off as really fast tanks. Well, then we're going to give these tanks arms so they're not just locked forward. If they can move forward, but they, they can shoot left and right. They can move to the sides. They can move around. All right, well, shit, now we're on a mountain. This tank can't get up that mountain. We need legs. Mm. Then it moved to four legs, and then it just literally progresses. Like, actually, the human form, yeah, it's not flawed, a, but it's not it works. Ideal. Yeah. So it, it, and like, it's like, oh, and when you go, when you go down that path, you're like, Oh no, this makes sense. So now you have these big robots running into battle, fighting each other. And it's like, oh shit, okay. And there's more to it than that. But basically, like it's because of just this pollutant in the air now that you can't lock on to shit. It's it's direct line laser weapons and it's um, rail guns and projectiles and that's it. Get in there, beat the thing up, get out, you know? Do you and I love that. I love that whole universe and just like what it's come to in that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I love, um, I know a lot of people hate them. I love Pacific Rim. Second one kind of I sucks. love Pacific Rim. I love that, and that too. Why yeah. do we need these giant robots? Well, yeah, the nukes fighting, aren't working well. Yeah. You know, it's silly, but there was Why are we necessity. fighting the kaiju? Yeah. But even yeah, them, like, it's like they never really talk about why. Like, why are why don't we just have battleships? Or like, why don't we just... Why, what about rail guns? What about airborne... La- like, yeah, yeah. Like a 747 gunship? Like a C5 with like a rail gun on the side? Just like a... Yeah, C-130 yeah. on steroids. Like, they never addressed that. Like, that could... Why not? They could. Yeah. Why not do that? There, there could have been a couple um, couple of uh, different ways they went. But at the end, they, for some reason, they landed on a giant robot. Which are and, awesome, uh, but... Hey, you know what? Yeah. There's, a, so, there's unfortunately so much wrong, also wrong with Pacific Rim. Like, Gypsy Danger, no alloys. Well, alloys are a combination of metal. That means that's a fusion of one metal's property fused with another. So that's how you get steel and titanium. So if Gypsy Danger is no alloy, what is it? Pure iron? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. That there's iron doesn't have that much structural integrity to hold up said thing like that. It would buckle. The yeah. knees would. There's not it, what. Yeah. There's a lot wrong Pacific Rim, but yeah. it's still fun to watch. No, it's awesome. I kind of like when that when that one Loved monster it. has like the EMP blast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that I, that, I kind of get into that because I'm like, okay, well now you have to have these like analog like diesel generator or like diesel like muscle cord like you monsters. Well, no, they didn't know about that EMP yeah, well, because up until that point, that EMP it hadn't happened. If you thought what was happening, each monster that showed up, if you each monster that had successfully showed up had the had the weakness of the last one kind of cut out yeah because the last one got beat up by two monsters so they sent in another monster with an emp to disable multiple robots yeah so they the monsters had progressively gotten stronger they this the, the creators whoever the hell they were slowly just upgrading the monsters the same way the humans were upgrading because yeah they, you know you find out like they, they're not random attacks it's they're trying it's an alien attack yeah. so yeah to see kind of progress like that um i was like oh okay cool that makes sense and the pacific rim 2 was terrible so we was, talk about that. yeah like i love the idea like I, I, I like the general idea like they're trying to like terraform earth like their first run was the dinosaurs like it, you know, yeah, it didn't work. Pretty, yeah I thought that was like, cool. That's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, right. and you're trying to tear, and that's why at the end it's trying to go into the spoiler. That's why it's trying to go into the giant volcano to bring about the like the global, like the the greenhouse effect, like irreversible yeah. damage. But yeah, the thing that I can't get past is that the robots move like people in the second it one. Would. They sprint. They it's the the power need like when a robot goes like that. But the robot is a hundred stories tall. That means you have an arm that's moving like two hundred feet up in a second. That's that's it's too. You can't get into it. I couldn't get into it. But yeah, it's. So do you think that? Do you think railguns are make gonna make a comeback? 
or not railguns? Do because we are they are making a huge. Well, they're making an entry. We have those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, that was, I said it the wrong way. Do you think battleships are going to make a comeback and just replace the turrets with railguns? No. Damn it. I think it's. I think it's all going. It's going to move to air and space. Yeah. It's just going to be like, why have a ship on the sea when you have a spaceship in orbit that can hit anything? It yeah. doesn't need to be subjected to the the harshness of the ocean and yeah. have to deal with storms and waves and yeah. it can just it can flow in low orbit and you're anywhere in our ocean guess what we see you yeah. like you know instead of being line of sight in the in a horizon just, you're now above it and yeah it's like you can see you can see all of it so yeah. i think it's gonna i think naval i didn't think naval warfare is gonna i mean it already is a thing in the past but uh i think it's gonna move away from that yeah it's it's i think space-based weapons just i've always thought that is like that is the ultimate that is the ultimate end game because if you could have like a ring of space-based weapons, let's just say they're at where the space station is, that just right. means you're o- always 220 miles from your enemy. That's 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 nothing. Right now, if you wanted to fire anything, a rail, a, a, a platinum rod, um, a railgun, a bullet, a missile, a rock, anything like that, you need some type of propellant. You need a reactionary force to go and yeah. move, right? Do you know what um, just uh, a, a relativistic kinetic kill vehicle is? Yeah, rods from God. Huh? Yeah, Rod, exactly. Rods Rod from, from God. God. Yeah, exactly. Or what's her name's uh, General Hoth or whoever the hell from the Star Wars movie who hit light speed and went into the ship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful scene, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I squealed a little. Bit. I was like, oh, they did it! <laughs> Even though they broke everything in Star Wars canon doing that. Yeah, yeah, That's another yeah. story. Um, it's like why haven't you been doing why didn't you do that in the death star yeah. but anyway um box office you get you move into space something like that you don't need you don't need propellant anymore you don't need it's just you let go drop it's yeah. i mean and you can it could be it could be literally as simple not even like propellant it could be a fucking spring something to eject that mass away from your ship and you let gravity do the rest yeah or if it's not a platinum rod, if it's not a tungsten rod, and it is a little smaller, yeah, you okay, cool. It, it is some type of electric magnetic projection rail system to speed it up, get it faster, quicker. If it's fair, but by no means would you need the expenditures of like gunpowder and mm. rocket propellant in that aspect. It's just like I'm right there. I'm gonna drop. Them. That's it. Yeah. And drop gun, and then you move into laser weapons, which is all other... Say, I was going to say, that's the next stage of end game ish because once you get to yeah. the end game of dropping shit from space, well, now it becomes, well, who can get their thing there fastest? Yeah. You get up space, there with a laser... battles are going to be very... Any type of space warfare is going to be so outlandishly different than what anybody can possibly imagine and think of. Like, you are you will never see the other ship. You'll never be close enough to see the other ship. And it it's just literally about letting... You have to. If you can just get the other ship to overheat quick enough, yeah. it's done. Yeah. And you can't vent heat in space. Like yeah. there's nothing to absorb the heat there's in no, space. Yeah, there's no medium. Exactly. So getting heat out of a spacecraft is actually pretty friggin' difficult. Yeah. Uh, you need to cool it down. And yeah. It's yeah. Exactly. Do we? You forget what air does for us with radi- radiation yeah. and all that. It, it's, there's nothing there. There's nothing there to radiate. Yeah. You, know? you can't just vent it into the air, and there's no air. Yeah. It's. <laughs> We got to think, man, would there even be space battles or is it? Because right after we formed the nuke, a lot of people don't know this. Andy Jacobson talks about it in her book, DARPA. But there is actually like a, d- a debate in the, like, the upper echelon or the, I guess the inner rings, the upper echelons of the, the Pentagon that like, should we just go nuke the Soviets and China? And it's like we have this insane weapon that we know they're eventually going to get. They're like, do we just I think Truman's quote was, do we just go lick the world? Do we just go give everyone sort of a just beat them the fuck down and then we are forever on top? And we didn't do it. And we managed there, to get to this point without doing it. There was a battle plan. I want to say it was in the Korean War. I'm pretty sure it was in the Korean War. Some random general had a proposition of using it was, a, I think, 13 nuclear weapons up the peninsula of Korea. Not random. Just, Douglas MacArthur. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> it wasn't a random general. It was Douglas MacArthur. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was yeah. MacArthur. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, I saw his. I've, I've seen that battle plan, and yeah. it's like we're just gonna boop, 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 yeah. boop, boop, and just that was it. Yeah. No one signed off on it. Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, he was fired eventually because because Truman said we're not doing that, and then he called out Truman, and Truman was like, "Fuck you." Here's the big president, Dick. You like, don't talk shit about yeah. me. That would have been a little much. That would have. Yeah. 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 But dude, uh, 
think about it. If you so like it's the opportunity is coming up again that if you can get like some laser death ray in space, you don't have to worry about other nations because as they're launching it, just zap them, zap their facilities, zap their. I mean, there's a whole bunch of moral and ethical questions. They haven't done anything yet, but it's it looks like it's just going to follow the the nuclear arms race again. It's going to be mutually assured destruction because everyone's going to have a laser beam pointed at everyone. It's, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I don't know, man. Um, oh God, what was it? There was, there was a. I remember reading a theory. It was, it was how to do with that. It had to get get into orbit, get into space, establish something, and then I can't remember what the hell it's called. But basically, you put so much, you do so much destruction. You put so much shit into orbit. Basically, you blow up so much crap that's moving so fast, nothing ever can take off. Oh, the yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's you, you walk the planet down. That's pr- it. Prison. And planet. It, it was like it, it was an extreme like, in, like insurance kind of thing. It's like you take off, you establish what you need to in orbit. You get a couple people out there and then you lock the and planet down. Like, down. that's it. And nothing can take off. Like, it just. That'd be it. It'd just be uh, just like a constant yeah, like it's, swirl of just of just debris. Or, that's orbital it. You're velocity. Done. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. <laughs> it's some weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's true. There was a there was a plan in like the fifties where we thought if we detonated something like like a nuke every like six minutes in our atmosphere. There was some effect where, like, we were going to detonate something like thousands of nukes a year above the United States, but we were going to be able to we basically create this like shield of electrons that would fry any incoming ICBM. So it was we literally were going to create like a shield. It's <laughs> like, yeah, but it's I think they decided not to because all the radioactive material. Yeah, there's that radio. That's our radiation right there. Yeah. Oh, always getting in the damn way. <laughs> Jesus. Damn. <laughs> All right, Franklin, we're we're coming up on exactly an hour, and I don't want to. Oh. I don't want to oh. hold you up. I got nothing I'm doing. Gonna, I, I'm going for a little longer. All right. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, I just don't want to. I don't want to hold you hostage because I have done that with guests before, where I realize they're kind of tired. I'm like, oh fuck, I'm sorry. I've been talking to you for seven hours. If um, I if I end up here, that got you. <laughs> I'll or, just close it uh, off. That's it. Be like, all right, this is this is Frank. Son. This is Frank. <laughs> but so. Do you think that? Do you think that, or is it, or is it just going to go drones? Do you think that making like Iron Man suits? Do you think it's like a great movie idea, but it's like not? It would just be drones, or it would just, it would just be drones. Yeah, it wouldn't it would even be, be the human form. Why do that when you could just have a bunch of like? It would have, never be the human form. It wouldn't be. It yeah. really. Drone, drone and autonomy wise, it wouldn't be. Yeah. The only reason we may ever make robots and drones in the human form is to appease um, a uh, our, our visual own. representation. That's it. Yeah. Uh, and it also would, but the the only the only benefit you would ever do in that instance is to allow a drone to interact with human based objects hmm. to get the car and drive. It would need to be pretty human shaped to operate doors and stairs and stuff. So there's, there's certain needs, but then if you're talking just warfare and battlefields where like everything in there is made for that specific weapon, um, who cares what it looks like? Does it have? Yeah. Can it move quicker? Can, yeah. Does it have four legs? Does it have tracks? Is it a spider type yeah. of thing? Like. Who cares what it looks like? It does. It goes out there, does this thing, comes back. Yeah. Or would it just be like? Would it be like in a? Would it be something that could just transform to, to the most, like, the most efficient form? It could be. It could be adaptive. It yeah. could absolutely be adaptive. Spider for a tunnel. It could be. Some something in water needs to be shaped very differently than something in air. Yeah. And if you, you if it's flying and it wants to go into a building, well, it's probably need to change again. Yeah. So, some yeah. type of adaptation, yeah. What I, I, I that would probably work too. Yeah. Um, it's um, so that just be like yeah, you know, like that a just, multi-roll drone basically. Yeah. Like <laughs> it can do do a bunch of things. So is that just like? So but then would that be? So what do you think is going? Even though it's really just getting started, what do you think is going to replace three D printing? Is that going to be nanotechnology, or is that in a way kind of three D printing just at a hyper small scale? Because nanotechnology, you could have the helmet and then you know snap your fingers, and now it could be 
a spider going through a tunnel, snap your fingers. Now it could look like a <laughs> bat with a laser on it. It's there is so much wrong with our interpretations of Damn it. what nanotechnology is and or could be. Damn it. Um, yeah, it's 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 tricky. It's, it's not it's, nanobots. Like yeah, like nanoscopic billions, inconceivable amounts of microscopic robots combining to do a thing. Now, at the base, that thing would could only really ever be mechanical. It, it could make a hand, and then the hand can serve its mechanical function. It could make a gun, but that gun can't fire. You know, that gun, where are you gonna get the, the nanobot can't be gunpowder. Mm-hmm. It could be the bullet, it could be everything else, but there's no reactionary force. The, the, unless now you have Real particular gun. nanobots that have gunpowder in them, and then you're like, all right, well then you need, what do you prepare for, you know? Like, yeah. how do you, how do you prepare for, every, you know, like, all right, cool, now now some of them have gunpowder in them, but all right, now you need it to produce some type of electrical current. All right, now do each of the robots have electrical conduits through them and you can, but that's gonna create resistance because now you have electricity traveling through all these individuals. There's just like, there's these layers and then um, something, a, a pro- like some problem with like Iron Man suit. Where the hell does the color come from? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> where? Why? Why does it? Why, where? Because when he yeah. does the thing, you see all the nanobots yeah. start coming out and going around. I mean, it's nanotech, but like, where? Yeah. So like you programmed in there that you wanted these particular nanites to then be able to reflect red light. So like that was a design choice, you yeah. know. So it's all these. Oh, it's nanotech. It can do anything. No, it can't. It can only do what you tell it to do. Yeah. And he made it so it looks this color. He made it so it has. A freeze ray in it. He made it so he it has propellant and thrusters. Um, you know, so th- there's all this extra layers. Like, yeah, you can make a nanite, but what, you now you need to somehow program it and tell what the hell to do, which is just. <sighs> yeah. And and the theory of something like nanotech is every single one of those nanites can serve any single every single function of that object. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's here or here, you can swap them and they'll know exactly what to do based on their positions. Almost like stem cells, yeah. actually. Pluripotent so depending cells, on yeah. depending on what it's around, it knows what function it needs to serve. And that's the data you would need to put in something like that. Like, what, you know? Because once that nanite becomes disconnected, how is it possibly ever gonna know what to do, you know? So there has to be just this, it's like quantum computing level. Like it's it's ridiculous. It is it it's a cool concept, but like cool. I don't think we'll ever have anything close to you know soon. Yeah. You know, and like where did all the weight? Where's all the weight go? <laughs> well, it could like, be. Does, does his arc reactor weigh? Is it the weight of a suit? Or well, is the suit super efficient and it's just like one nanite thick? It, it, it can't be because he got his shit pushed in on Titan. That his that suit was thin. That's why in, uh, in Endgame his suit was bu- buffer and bigger. He learned. It, he actually went through thirty five iterations after he got his after he got his ass kicked on Titan. He was like, "Well, there was some stuff wrong with my suit because he thought he peaked. Yeah, like nanotech, I can do anything." And Thanos quickly reminded him that he couldn't. Yeah. So he upgraded his suit. He did a lot. He fixed a lot of things on it, uh, and it was beefier. It had more muscle. It had more nanite mass. And even as you see it building, you can see layers being created. Mm-hmm. You can see conduits in it. So it, it's, it's, it has some thickness to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you're like, right. But yeah, how big, yeah, how heavy is it? Does where's the weight? Yeah. Now, the, the, the theory behind the bleeding edge tech in the comics is the bleeding edge armor, the nanotech armor in the comics, is in his skin. It comes, oh. that's why it's the bleeding edge. It comes, when he activates it, it uh, comes out of the skin and forms. Geez. Okay, I didn't I know don't that. think they wanted to go that gross in the mcu so it was in here yeah but yeah it's, it's weird it's uh again it's all visual it all looks great it's yeah cool. but, uh, See, I, yeah in I terms think, of yeah i think he kind of showed the or whether or not they meant to the importance of sort of swarms at the end of iron man 3 when he's fighting um what's the it's the bat it's fuck, what's the the they're using the veterans and they, they like glow orange you know what i'm talking extremis. about extremists extremists yeah <laughs> When he's fighting, when he's fighting that guy at the end, I mean, really, that when he when he has the house party protocol and he brings all of them, to me, that really like that was better than any one suit. Like, if you can just bring in a swarm, it's 
I mean, whenever he teams up with uh, Iron Patriot, <coughs> excuse me, Iron Patriot, a war machine, it, it's it's already amplified a million fold. So if you can bring in yeah. a whole just drone army, it kind of doesn't matter what one suit can do. Exactly. That and, That's and I just don't. It's a simple kind of. It's kind of like a you know like a Soviet fix, but like. There's nothing that, like, the Hulkbuster, I feel like any of the other suits could do against it. Maybe you could just say it was too bulky. But, I mean, even then, he has it <laughs> shot down from orbit. It's, you know, it's there. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole, yeah, the Hulkbuster was pretty big. It's just he has, um, was it Veronica? He just has it floating above him. And it comes straight down. It's only 220 miles. That's nothing. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Are you ever going to make a Hulkbuster? Why do you bring that up? I'm sorry. No, like what? What just? Just because we naturally moved into that part of the conversation. Well, I'm just I'm thinking as I'm talking to you, I'm literally looking around at all your Iron Man shit, and now I'm thinking about <laughs> Hulkbuster. And I'm like, oh I, wait, that has to be one of the most asked questions I get on like really? um, on Instagram and I'm YouTube. Sorry. You're like, are you gonna make a Hulkbuster? Yeah, send me the money. Um, I actually just had an idea for that, and it was literally why you went to go take a piss. I don't know why I thought of it. I don't know. Maybe 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 somebody. I don't know. I don't know. It's always been in the back of my head. Like you know. A actual full-sized Hulkbuster it's like the size would of my be house. Two insane. Now people have made cosplays for it, but it's always scaled down a little bit because, well, practicality. Uh, it's it's still a thing you need to keep somewhere. Um, I had just I re- like literally <laughs> half an hour ago <laughs> had an idea. Um, open source Hulkbuster. Okay. Where I know a lot of people with a lot of 3D printers. <laughs> Everyone makes a, p- a piece. Everybody makes a really small piece, sends it in, and that'd be a pretty cool like community kind of project to like organize and. You'd have to put it, yeah. You have to like give it to like Marvel Studios or something, or put it in Disney. Then you died have to donate something like that. I'd have to donate somewhere. Oh yeah, well you you couldn't have to. I don't know. Just Um, put it in front of your house. That'd be badass. Right, just the whole bus wrap around driveway. I want to see canonically how tall the Mark One Hulkbuster is. Okay, well I'm getting guess. I'm um, uh, twenty feet, twenty five. Because well, he throws like let's see, he's he picks up like an elevator. He's yeah, he picks he, up an elevator. He can lock yeah. his hand around the Hulk's fist. How big is the Hulk's fist? <laughs> it's pretty much the size of like the top of like Black Widow. It's shit. I don't know, twenty feet tall. It's pretty big. It's huge. It's fucking huge. It is, it is a big, beefy boy. Capabilities, HUD, sleeping gas. Oh, man, they don't have, like, a... Can you not find, MCU like, a scale with it? I want to know. Height. Dimensions? 11 feet. What? No, that's bullshit. The Hulkbuster is 11 feet high, which makes it the tallest armor to date. Its height is 3 feet taller than the Hulk. I don't know, Maybe. Because there's there's figures that show, um, no, that make that actually works out. I don't think you can see it, but yeah. that's Nick Fury standing next yeah. to the Hulkbuster. So okay. like, yeah, I'm almost, kind of imagining almost that size height. being yeah. in because yeah, okay, it's big, but it's not like. Well, it's got to be able to fit his whole top half and just the top, right? Because doesn't he yeah. like his arms? His arms his, his, actually, his arms don't go through it like arms. His arms are here, actually. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. He's pulling it like this. Yeah. Um, because the Hulk rips his arms off a couple times. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. His legs are where they need to be, but his arms are actually more a little bit for like kind of down here, and he's doing this and fighting. Um, I but bet you yeah, like Hulkbuster, that'd be man. pretty cool uh, to print to have a bunch of people print parts for that. And just assemble it, you know? That'd be... That would be badass, dude. That would be incredible. It's it's very red. 11 feet tall. Oh, my God. I mean, I guess that makes sense. A, ba- a professional basketball hoop rim is 10 feet. Yeah, that's that's a big, big boy. Yeah, so maybe, like, the top of, I don't know, like, the, the white square on a basketball hoop halfway up the backboard, maybe? I think oh, the yeah, top of the backboard is 14 feet. On an MBA. Yeah, that sounds about right. This thing, hey, I can move and talk to you. Jesus, um, what the? That's, f- I saw a picture so, of you with that the uh, one of your yeah. thumbnails. So this is this is a uh, six and a half feet tall. Jesus. So, and I'm five eight. <laughs> Shout out five eight. So, 
this on t- this standing on top, like me and this together would be the whole poster. <laughs> what? How, how tall is it without the handle? Uh, I don't know. Uh, if you're five eight, I don't know. Five six, five. I can't. I don't know. The handle is four, 15 inches tall. So what would it be? Just like take off the handle? It'd be two of those. Yeah, actually, yeah, roughly. God, that's big. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. That'd be so. That'd be that'd be like so cool though. To like, that would be incredible. I just don't know what I would do with the damn thing. And I know not everybody would be on board with it. Um, I bet you, dude. There is seven billion people in the world. <laughs> there are two billion people on YouTube. You can absolutely find enough. I mean, you can absolutely. I'm gonna drop this thing if I try that. Lay that down. But how big is that? How big is the Hulkbuster's helmet? What's that? How big is the Hulkbuster head? Because it doesn't. It's oh, like a pretty pretty big actually. It's like a, yeah, it's like um, a juggernaut type. Like that. What if you just started with a, a Hulkbuster head? Uh, they have the they have the files for it. They're out there. I bet if you um, made a head and showed it like a super realistic like put your a game into it i bet that would be enough to get people excited to contribute to a that would be yeah it'd be kind of wild let's see i think i know who made the hulk buster suit um there's a couple people and i know some other people who would be down to model something like that like a actual full-size hulk buster uh armor stl cosplay hulk buster would you just want one person to make it though so it's uniform because what if some people aren't putting in the same like stringent you know because you hold yourself to a pretty high high level of quality control what if someone sent in like an arm that was fucked up and it oh sorry i was busy and it's just like god damn it so would you rather yeah probably just need people to send money it'd be tricky it'd be very tricky on where you had to draw that line and where you uh I, I think don't know. I think you'd I really need one know. person to make it. I think you'd want like a uniform quality. Cause yeah, what if you Ooh. have a thousand people work on it and you get half of the pieces are just shit? Yeah, it'd be uh, there'd have to be some some type of quality control, and I I think that'd be fair to state like you know if I we need some quality here, you know we don't want to put parts on that are gonna look bad. But the, also the problem is no, I, nobody could send them painted. That's the problem because not everybody's going to be able to get the same color. Exactly. So they would all need to be primer and parts. I think you, know? you just have to make it. I think it has to be a frankly built production. I don't. I don't have that type of money. <laughs> How much would it cost to create it? Like not just man hours. Like let's say that would have that would be at least something that size, an eleven foot Iron Man suit. A year. No, oh, more than that. Um, that we were talking probably about 40, 40 plus rolls of plastic, um, where my suit only took fourteen. You know, because um, the structure, and then that's not even including the internal structure. It would need to be like a metal frame. I'd have to like yeah. lock up. You know, where like I could like lock everything on. Yeah. Because um, what if it destroys its own, itself and its own weight? Yeah, exactly. Just it, would the need to, it would need. It would basically just need to be a, a frame like that, just like metal, and everything. The legs are supported completely by themselves, but then the waist is there, but it's supported by the metal frame yeah. and the legs. So like, no, it's not sharing any weight. But yeah. It'd be. It'd be pretty light, honestly. It wouldn't be, like it's a lot of plastic, but even still, it wouldn't be that heavy. Um, and the frame inside would have to be heavier to make yeah. sure it never moved. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just it'd be wild it'd be a wild project for I, sure i think you could do it i'd love to do that but i gotta finish my own first suit my own damn suit first so can you, can you give me a uh a, a review of, of what you already have or is that i have is that, all it's all we're gonna we're gonna have a little shaky for a second here sorry fine. folks it doesn't matter man but but Jesus that's uh um, christ that's the suit jesus where are my printers oh no yeah. um <laughs> So where, that's them. Where are your printers? I moved rooms. Oh, okay. um, they're in a different room now, because um, this gives me this lets me have more room in here. We were able to clear out another uh, a room, another room, which actually we're getting rid of some furniture from that other room. And the guy who's coming to pick it up is on his way over. I just got a text oh, for it. So when he gets here, I am gonna have to go. No, no worries, but, uh, man. But he's, he's he's still a couple minutes. Um, You're fine. 
So yeah, now I have more room. It's literally that's the that part right there. That's the new like crotch piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, the old one just didn't fit right. It didn't like line up with the abs and legs properly. So I had to print a new part. Um, and I it's not painted because I couldn't get my hands on the paint. Today, literally, I went to the store and they were restocked. So I'm in I'm back in hardware mode. Yeah. And it's just it's just fitting everything together and getting it to work a little bit more coherently. Everything like I can stand in it and it looks great but I can't really move in it yet. I need to, the, the biceps fall down, so I need to lock them to the shoulders better, um, and I have to redo all my wiring. I hate it. <laughs> Why do you have to redo the wiring? It's- I don't like it. Um, I don't like how it all operates. I don't like how I wired it. Um, I've learned so goddamn much during this whole, pro. like, it's unreal. Um, and the things I would do differently this time, like, yeah, my next armor very, is, is already very different and I have a whole, I know what to do now. And I know what, more importantly, I know what not to do. Okay. And that's crucial for, you know, building. Um, but I just don't like the way some of the wires are routed. I need to, I need to adjust a lot of things. Um, so and I, I'm, I'm down for it. I, it. It's intimidating, but it's just like, I, I have to do it. I want this to be perfect. Um, so there's a lot I have to fix and go back, but now I have access to the paint and I can finish the, the, uh, the con piece. Um, I have a new helmet printed for it. This is, it's almost done, so I just need the jaw. So it's, this one's motorized, this one actually has the servos and stuff. Um, so this one's, it'll be a lot more comfortable, so now I can paint this one. Um, actually, wait a minute. I'm not crazy, I think, hopefully. Yeah, it gets a little stuck. I gotta, I gotta trim it out a little bit. But that's amazing. That is oh. insane. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a good speed. Um, it's the same size helmet as this one. Just the, in, the innards are just wired differently. Um, so Jeez. I just have a lot to finish. <laughs> it's gonna look, it's gonna look good. What's that? Uh, what's that camo one? That camo one is was for it's for a friend. Um, I'm waiting. I've been waiting on parts for it for a while now. Um, red LED eyes. That's and, awesome. Uh, that is awesome. Yeah, I like this one. That is that is awesome. Yeah, he's uh, he has um, uh, uh, Evo. He has an Evo 10 and a, a Corvette C5 or C no C6. Um, it's they're both camo wrapped in camo white. And he's like, dude, can you make me a helmet? that matches my paint job and I'm like, I can try. <laughs> so that's what this one is. Everybody calls it the war machine helmet, but it's 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 a it's a Mark 85 helmet, but just camel wrapped. Awesome. And then I, I like it. The, the, red eye, the red eyes aren't hooked up right now, but they um, they look mucho great in it. <laughs> I love, that looks awesome. Yeah, so yeah. this will be gone soon. Literally like all these helmets are gone. This is for my buddy. This is for Oscar, Robert, some kid in Australia, some kid in Pennsylvania. That's going to some other kid. I might do a giveaway with, there's another helmet in my display case over there. I might get rid of that one because I have my new helmet now. Um, and then the unpainted one that's up there is for my new suit, that one. So now, it's, uh, it's fun. Now that you've like learned how to do all this shit, do you, it, are you getting faster at it? Oh my God, yeah. Okay. Oh my God. Odd, yeah. Yeah. So you can like yes. streamline it. All right. Hell yeah. Very much faster. It takes me 20 hours to print a helmet. Um, total, all all three parts. 20 hours, um, and I can paint it. Uh, I can have it primed, painted, and assembled in about two hours. Finishing and electronics another hour. So I, I can pump these out pretty quickly now. The battle damage takes the longest. That takes that takes me like an hour and a half, two hours to do. Um, between the weathering, trying to mix up trying to mix up all like the right rust colors for some of the like it like you can also you can see rust and stains all around the side of it and all here mixing that all up but now i know how to mix it up so i'm already faster than i was last time so jesus I'm all learning right. all right man well i'm i don't want to keep because i know that guy's coming over i don't want you to have to run at the last second so I'll no, let you go. Cool. thank you thank you for having me dude um, thank you for coming on different things we were probably planning on but it was still fun dude i never <laughs> plan on talking about anything I, I fucking yeah dude i i loved it i love talking about random shit and going deep into what the hell is gonna come next i'll watch altered carbon and yeah man i'd love to talk Do again it. about just yeah 
what the hell is in sure. store? Yeah, man. I have no script. It's not like today Frank and I are talking <laughs> about 3D printing. I don't give a shit, man. We can talk about whatever. We can talk about veganism and uh, how it's interconnected with global commerce. I don't give a fuck. I have a good time. <laughs> as long as it's there natural, go, man, man, I enjoy it. Frankly, Bill, thank you so much, sir. And um, Thank you for having me, my guy. I dude, appreciate it. Dude, anytime, man. It's Please. Please come back again. Let's do another one. And um, yeah. hell yeah, man! I'm gonna I'm gonna come. Back. Sorry for asking about the Hulkbuster. That wasn't planned. I promise. No one. No. No, I, no one put good. me up. I, I I think because so many people ask, I think I might have to look into that as a project. I was gonna say the the love dropped from your face. You're like, why did you ask me that? And I was like, it, is this a personal thing? I'm sorry. <laughs> did I hit a nerve? No, yeah, I was like, just, I don't want to talk about it. Um, all yeah. right, man. Thank you so much, and uh, Godspeed, Frank. Hey, take it easy, man. Peace, buddy.